Adam Schefter reported today that the Ravens are waiving defensive end Yannick Ngakwe per source. The Ravens want to re-sign him to their practice squad should he clear waivers. And the moment I saw this, it's that Squidward meme, Falcon just pointing down at Ngakwe going, oh yeah, make this happen, please. Now, he's going to have to clear waivers. The It's kind of like your fantasy football league. No one cares about your fantasy team. Um, and the Falcons are currently 22nd in the waiver wire order. So if they were to place a claim on him and they are awarded him, they have to do a couple of things. They have to immediately have a roster spot available, although they might have one just because of Rook. But anyway, I'll get to more of that just a little bit here. Let's talk about Ngakwe and what he has been up to this season. He's played 87 snaps and he has one and a half sacks. Take my money. I am sold. He hasn't played 100 snaps and he would be tied for second on the team in sacks. I don't care if he's not as good as he once was in his heyday. That type of production with that little role is more than welcomed in Flowery Branch right now. And Gakwe, from 2016 to 2022, tied for seventh in sacks with 65. This is a no-brainer to me. Especially because... With Rook Aroro going on injured reserve, you've got an open roster spot already. I mean, the roster can be fluid, so maybe I forgot a transaction or two, but just going off the rough napkin math here, one guy goes to IR, opens up a roster spot, a player at a position of need that you did not make a trade for at the deadline is available. Am I speaking Chinese? What more do we have to get done and say to get Ngakwe to Atlanta? What do you have to lose? Please, tell me. Are we really concerned about the 53rd player on the roster losing that job? I'm sorry, but when you are this bad at getting after the quarterback, sacrifices are going to have to be made. And there is a player with a proven track record, eight, was that, four, 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 five, six, uh, four or five straight seasons of eight or more sacks, this is an, a slam dunk, in my opinion. Not because I think he's going to come in here and have 10 sacks, but because you did not make a move at the trade deadline. Here's a proven pass rusher who's going to be available for dirt cheap for the second half of the season, and all it's going to cost you is maybe a roster spot, but you just opened one up. Slam the button for yes. So should the Falcons sign or claim whatever verbiage you want to use, Yannick Ngakwe? Give me an S for sign or P for pass. I'm going I'm going to sign. I, I don't see what Atlanta has to lose. The Ravens had to make a little bit of a gamble because they brought back their running back, Keaton Mitchell. So they needed to open up a roster spot. So they're hoping they can slip Ngakwe through the waiver wire and bring him out of their practice squad. But I think Atlanta should ruin the, ruin the fun. They should make a waiver claim for a player with a very successful history of sacking the quarterback, something the Falcons have only done nine times in nine weeks. Now, with that being said, we can get on to some greener pastures here because I have two stats coming up on today's show that I think you guys are going to love. And I'm going to be done being a grumpy old man over the trade deadline and the lack of an acquisition. And we're going to be positive. We're going to pick each other up. So, before we look at those two stats that I know you guys are going to be very excited about, I do have to give a quick shout out to our wonderful sponsor today, and that is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize Picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. So download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. All that information is in the comments and description of today's video. Download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. So some fun facts that I think you guys will enjoy. Darnell Mooney is second in the NFL in 20-plus yard receptions, only trailing 
Justin Jefferson. He has been an outstanding free agent signing by Terry Fontenot. 14 receptions of 20 or more yards, head of Zay Flowers, head of DK Metcalf, and only one behind Jay Jettas. Mo Mooney has been more than just a really good signing. That's kind of downplaying it. He's been such an explosive player for them and coming through at big times in the game as well. Plus, through nine games, he has 588 yards and five touchdowns. Look what he did his last two years in Chicago. In 15 games, 400 yards and change and one touchdown. The guy had three touchdowns combined in the last 27 games. And in nine, he's got two more than that. And on top of it, he's not just working by himself. Drake London and Darnell Mooney form the number one receiver duo in the NFL. They've got more receptions. They've got more yards. They've got more touchdowns than any other tandem out there ahead of DK Metcalf and Jackson Smith and Jigba. And unfortunately, a pair of injured receivers, one healthy, now one injured in the Houston Texans with Nico Collins and Stefan Diggs. Now, I'm not going to be the I told you, go, I told you, I told you so guy, but I kind of did tell you because if anyone watched our fantasy football video before the season started, I had Darnell Mooney as my number one player of value based on how good I thought he would be in fantasy terms and where his ADP was, his average draft position. Now, the other ones may not be perfect. Pitts at two, I would swap him and Drake London, although London went round two and Pitts went a little bit later, so you got to take that into account. But Darnell Mooney has been a home run signing so far, and for anyone who got them on their waiver wire or took them at the last pick in the draft, you're welcome. Now, before we look at the next stat that you guys are going to enjoy, we are trying to reach 29,700 subscribers. I want to get there before Sunday as a bit of a jumping off point. And then during our Falcon Saints watch party, my goal is to get to the big 3-0. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are looking for a free Atlanta Falcons news and rumors channel. The other fun stat that you guys are going to enjoy, the amount of three and outs the Falcons offense has endured this year, just nine times. It's first in the NFL, nine out of 92 drives. That's one a game. Think about what a huge relief that is for the defense. But what's even more impressive is the way this unit corrected one of their biggest issues in the first month of the year. The Falcons weeks one through four were converting third down 26% of the time. Weeks five through nine, nearly 20 points better at 45%. Staying on the field is the most important thing for an offense. But especially when you have an offense that knows it has added pressure to its plate because the defense is likely not going to limit the opponent to 14 or 17 points. You're going to have to score a lot of points if you want to win. So the offense at this point is kind of the inverse of the old saying, what's the best offense? A good defense. In this case, the best defense is a good offense. The offense has to start playing defense by just keeping the opposing offense off the field and keep moving the ball, holding on to possession, and don't let the defense get on the field and unfortunately undo a lot of great work the offense will have done. I know I'm being a little harsh on the defense, but man, it's been a lot of straight weeks of really bad first half performances by Atlanta's defense. Kind of got better against the Cowboys, but I need to see some consistency. So for the offense, they got to play defense. How do they play defense? By keeping the opposing quarterback on the bench. How do you do that? By extending drives and converting on third down. Something they have done at a very high rate. It's something they've done an awesome job of, avoiding three and outs. So the defense walks off, then walks right back on. Now, before we sign off, I do want to get your score predictions in for Sunday right now. Predict the score, Falcons versus Saints. I think it's going to be an ass kicking. I've got the Dirty Birds winning 40-14. to 14. Defense uses this video as motivation to go out there and play the best game yet.